We're talking to you about air, which is in theaters on a Wednesday. That's how exciting it is. They couldn't even <laughs> wait until Friday to open air. If you have not subscribed to us yet, we'd love to have you come join our thoughtful and engaged film community where we talk about things like Super Mario Brothers, but also things like air. We're doing it all for you, the YouTube community. Alonzo, tell us about air. That was risky. Don't change that now. For a rookie. Yes. Who's never set foot on an NBA court. That's the literal definition of rookie. Yeah. Did you ever wonder how the Air Jordan came to be and how Nike made that deal and how that was a huge game changer in the world of athletic shoes? Well, there's a whole movie about it. So I hope you care. Um, <laughs> not a thing that I necessarily gave a moment's thoughts to, but I have to say I did find the movie very entertaining. It is directed by Ben Affleck and written by Alex Convery. It stars uh, Matt Damon as Sonny Vaccaro. He's a guy at, at Nike who's out scouting talent. He goes to a lot of high school tournaments. He's, you know, keeping track of these players as they go through the high school and college system. And uh, Nike in the early 80s is way, way behind in the basketball shoe market. It's all about Converse. It's all about Adidas. They need a Hail Mary. And the Hail Mary they come up with is we're going to put all of our money, all of our stakes into getting Michael Jordan. We think he's going to be important. We think he's going to be a, a major player. But obviously, this is a very complicated process. He likes Adidas. You got his agent to deal with, played by Chris Messina. You've got his very formidable mother to deal with, played by Viola Davis. So even though this is about a subject that isn't particularly close to my heart, because I don't really care about mm -hmm. basketball or shoes, I love movies about process. Yeah. And this is, if you liked Mad Men in terms of it, how it shows that world and how it shows the sort of corporate channels and the chances that people take and the, the sort of maneuvering to get the things that they want to get to. I found that really fascinating. And uh, as our friend Ben Mankiewicz would say, this is a movie about people who are good at their jobs. Yeah. Uh, and so that was really cool to watch as well. Michael Jordan himself barely figures into this. Like he is photographed in this movie the way Jesus is in Ben-Hur. <laughs> you see like the back of his head occasionally. And that's about it. It's really not about him. It's about everybody else trying to make this deal happen, creating the actual shoe, um, you know, all of this different stuff. You, you know, uh, Affleck popping up as Phil Knight, who runs Nike in a very weirdly zen kind of way. Obviously, this was made with full Nike cooperation, so there will be no discussion of child labor. Um, <laughs> you know, but on the other hand, as much as this is a kind of, you know, capitalism propaganda piece, it does underscore the historic nature of the deal that Michael Jordan made, which opened the door for athletes to have more of a stake in their endorsements and products that bear their name, which was a thing I did not know. Yeah, no, it's not a two hour shoe commercial by any means. It's about hustle. It's about like people making the deal and a lot of it takes place in offices and conference rooms and like the the tech lab where they build the shoe and that might sound really dry but the banter is so snappy and it all yes. moves so well and there's such an infectious energy about it that as you point out yourself you don't have to know anything about basketball to get sucked into this movie and like, how do you tell a story where we know the ending? Like, we right. know Michael Jordan became the superstar that Sonny Vaccaro thinks he'll be. We know that the Air Jordan not only got made, but became the best known sneaker ever in the history of shoes. So how do you tell that story in a way that is still engaging, still compelling, still have you, has you hanging on the edge of your seat? And that's just like the details in the writing and the mm. caliber of the cast that he has amassed. Yeah. What Ben Affleck does is he makes these really solid kind of old fashioned mid budget dramas for grown ups. Mm. Right? This is a comedy drama and you don't see a lot of movies like that anymore. I feel like this this is the lane he has carved out for himself between like Gone Maybe Gone and Argo, Argo and I didn't love Live by Night, but like this is kind of a return to form for him I think in terms yeah. of just how enormously entertaining it is and so well crafted. I mean, like Robert Richardson is the cinematographer here who usually works with Tarantino and Scorsese and, 
And so it, it looks fantastic. It moves so well. Um, the costume design is fantastic. Like every putty colored members only jacket <laughs> that Matt Damon wears, he's in that like doughy middle age mode that he was in for the informant. Like that's a really yes. good fit for him. And for like, like the, the desperation that comes of being that kind of like seemingly bland, like he uh, wants to upend your expectations. Go ahead. I want to give a shout out to Viola Davis's makeup because huh. it is very tempting in movies set in the eighties for women not to want to wear makeup that looked like it did back then because it is jarring to modern audiences. Yeah. There's a certain kind of like sheen and maybe sort of even oiliness to certain like mm -hmm. eyeshadows and lipsticks that you don't see very often in period pieces because I think a lot of actresses would be like, oh, no, no, I look ridiculous. Viola Davis's makeup is totally 1984 and I honor her for that. Yeah, and all of the stuff she has to wear, like yes. really unflattering pastels. Um, I love all of the give and take between Matt Damon and Ben Affleck because yes. after all these years, it is just such a joy to watch them <laughs> like cajoling and prodding and giving each other shit. Like it's just in their blood is so effortless. And so that's fun to watch them together. But then like, Matt Damon and Jason Bateman, Bateman also yes. have great give and take. Matt Damon and Chris Messina. Chris Messina has this one spectacular scene, this one incredibly <laughs> profane, <laughs> raunchy tirade on the phone that is just like an all-timer. Like the whole movie just stops <laughs> to let him go off as, um, as Jordan's agent, and it's hilarious. The problem I have with this movie is that it leans way too heavily on its needle drops. Yo, and so on many its, needle drops. And on its pop culture references. As you and I talked about <laughs> in our little quick out the theater reaction like yeah in the middle of you know everything it just stops to give you like the ghostbusters bumper sticker and a rubik's cube and a trivial and, pursuit and it, card yes and, and it's like it's like dude you did you not we were we're very clear that it's 1984 you don't have to stop and remind us again that was an odd choice that but uh, yeah i have i have never seen a movie that not only features so many needle drops but even just needle drops of other scores of the period yeah. like tangerine dreams music from risky business pops up in one scene i'm like this is, it's a lot to deal with. Also, it does that thing where, I'm sorry, Matt Damon's schlubby corporate character is not listening to the violent femmes of Blister in the Sun. He's just not. So, Maybe. like, mm, mm, <laughs> no. Mm -mm. <laughs> What's he listening to? Like Barry Manilow? Mr. What? Mr. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's a year or two later, but he's listening to, like, he's listening to Born in the USA, probably. Yeah. And there's a whole good conversation Lionel, Lionel about Born in the USA. Says. Yeah, there's a whole good conversation about Born in the USA. Yes. <laughs> in this movie. Um yeah, there's like there's a, a moment where like a just a transitional moment where Ben Affleck as Phil Knight is pulling up to Nike headquarters in his purple Porsche and they're blasting like you motor red. Yeah. And like like why we like almost all of Sister Christian plays while we watch Ben Affleck <laughs> pull onto the parking lot of Nike. It's very strange. Yeah, so that's we distracting. paid for the song, damn it, we're gonna use it. That's distracting. <laughs> but then like I would say the the, the places where the specific place and time are useful are like all the basketball references which i got which i know you didn't get there's one like little throwaway joke about kurt rambis that i laughed out loud at having grown up going to like showtime lakers games in the 80s so i appreciate being back in that period the whole lakers celtics all of that magic and larry i, I love that that's my childhood so Haven't i you been back that. in that period a lot lately wasn't there a whole hbo show about this very thing there really was and there was a whole <laughs> mini series about michael jordan yes. so yes it is zeitgeisty anyway i had a really good time it's just enormously crowd pleasing and smart and and sharp so i'm saying eight I said 7.2. It is absolutely, as you say, like uh, a, a, a mid-budget, smart, funny movie for adults, and we don't get enough of those. And ultimately, it's, it, it is a bit puffy, but I mean, I, I had a good time watching it. And again, it's, it's, it's fun for the process of it all.